Training A very important action that everyone in the world has done in one way or another, whether you aimed for it or not. You might have trained your brain to be better at math, or trained your muscles in the gym to be stronger, or maybe you have even trained to become a racing driver. Hi there, my name is Grandpa's Pace and this is my training video. So I've had a few incidents on my hardcore series that made me realize how dangerous the Minecraft world really is in hardcore. Actually, my inexperience led to my demise before I even started the series. Well, okay grandpa, we get it, the title, the thumbnail, I mean, that says it all. But what kind of training are you going to do? Well, I wanted to train myself in three main sections over two weeks, but the two weeks will be separated from each other by two months. The sections are movement, accuracy, and combat. Oh, and in each section, there'll be a three subcategory to train in. So, let's begin. In most games, we usually stumble upon a tutorial to learn how to play the game. But that's not the case with Minecraft. Minecraft just throws you into the game and tells you, well, <laughs> good luck, bud. But in every tutorial we encounter, the most basic thing to learn is how to move in that particular game. I'm not going to cover the basic movement in Minecraft. However, we're going to go a little bit more advanced than that. Let's start with the term called speed bridging. Speed bridging in Minecraft is a method to build a bridge from one platform to another as fast and efficient as possible while being on that very same bridge as you traverse on. Okay, but how? So before we answer that, we need to understand that in Minecraft, crouching will prevent you from falling off a block when trying to go over the block's edge. The particular method that I'll be focusing on is called Ninja Speed Bridging. This is one of the most basic speed bridging methods out there. To pull this off, I'll need to crouch and move backwards to the edge of the current block that I'm on. Since crouching at the edge of the block will make me seem like I'm floating, and as I've mentioned before, it won't let me fall off of it, I can build a block technically underneath me. As soon as I build a new block, I'll need to let go of the crouch button so I can get to the end of this new built block faster. Right before I reach the end of this new block, I need to crouch again so I won't fall off. And just rinse and repeat from there. Combine the two methods into one synchronized action will let you pull off something like this. Simple, right? Well, not really. This technique is hard to pull off. However, it's very rewarding when you get it right. I forgot to mention that I'm doing speed bridging training thanks to this server called mcplayhd.net. At first, I wanted to see how fast I can get to the platform across while crouching the whole way. That took me over 55 seconds. So, after I've started practicing the ninja method, I've managed to cross within 30 seconds. I knew by then that a sub 25 seconds is possible, so I kept on practicing that week. 
After a few days, I managed to pull off a sub 25 seconds and I was satisfied with that, leaving the remaining days of the first week without any more speed bridging training, which I regret. I came back after 2 months to the second week of training. After a few tries with the first day, I managed to set a new personal best. That motivated me to keep on training and try to surpass my own record, which I failed. After all that training, I can cross between two platforms within 45 to 55 blocks reach in a sub 25 seconds with a 50% success rate. I was very happy with this result. Before we move on to the next subcategory in movement, I want to thank Mystery Ore for this video's inspiration. Also, this world that I'm standing on comes from his Minecraft training video. I just made a few adjustments to it so it can fit my own content. So check out his video, the link is in the description below. Moving along to the next subcategory. Now, water of any depth prevents any entity, including the player, from sustaining falling damage if they fall into it, regardless of the distance fallen. That means that no matter how high I fall off from, as long as there's water on the block that I land on, I'll receive no damage. This is a golden rule in Minecraft that saves players so many times in many different situations. Which is why players invented a move called MLG Water Bucket. I've found out that MLG stands for Major League Gaming. The player can pull off this trick by placing water from a filled water bucket right underneath the player's feet before landing to receive no damage. This trick sounds pretty simple, however, in higher altitude, this trick becomes harder as the in-game mechanic gravity kicks in. Now, gravity works differently in Minecraft than the real world that we're living in, as not everything is subject to the same acceleration. Additionally, there is a drag force proportional to velocity, again, dependent on the entity. I won't go into the math regarding force velocity of the player as an entity, but if you'd like to check that out, I left the links in the description down below. I wanted to train with 10 MLG tries on 4 different tower heights. On the first couple days, I started with only 2 towers. The first tower is 24 blocks high and the second is 48 blocks high. After getting the hang of MLG, I thought to myself that 2 towers aren't enough. So I built up another tower which is 73 blocks high. Why 73 and not 74? Mainly because I forgot to add another block. But I wasn't satisfied with that either. So the following day I've built one final tower which is 96 blocks high. I also added a shield to my offhand so I won't depend on spamming the MLG. After doing 10 tries for each tower every day for 2 weeks, separated by 2 months of course, I've managed to have an 80% chance success rate with MLG Water Bucket. I was very thrilled with this result and hopefully I won't need to use this in the future. Which I surely will. Before we move to the most frustrating part of my training session, Let's jump to the next section of the video and we'll get back to this later. Accuracy. Accuracy is the quality or state of being correct or precise. Another definition is the ability to do something without making mistakes. With those two statements, I'll be focusing on these topics. Aim. Hotkeys. And CPS. Now, something that's worth noting, I don't like PvP in Minecraft, so CPS or clicks per second isn't really relevant to me. CPS basically translates to how many clicks you do in a specific time frame as an average, for example 30 seconds. 
Clicks per second is very crucial in older versions of Minecraft in regards of PvP, since there is no cooldown between every hit you do damage. So the faster you click, the better chances you have of winning. Oh, and for the record, my CPS stands between 6 and 7 within 30 seconds. Aiming is one of the most crucial skills to develop in a first person game. The definition states that it's to point or direct a weapon or camera at a target. The faster and more precise your aim is, the better you are in the game. To train myself in this subcategory, I've decided to buy a game that will help me improve with aiming. After a little bit of research, I felt like Aim Beast is the one for me, and it's pretty cheap on Steam. I've decided to focus on click timing, reflex, and tracking. After constantly training here, I can assure you that my aim has improved a lot, not only in Minecraft, but in any first person game. All I need to do after this part of training is to adjust my mouse sensitivity in any first person game to match Aim Beast's sensitivity. And I'm good to go. A hotkey is a key or a combination of keys providing quick access to a particular function within a program. Here this means the bottom bar on the screen allows you to put 9 different items within a key's reach. Getting the right item at the right moment in a video game can be a make it or a break it situation. So I need to train myself with the custom hotkeys that I've put in the game. As I've mentioned earlier, this specific world was created by Mystery Ore. That also includes this redstone contraption that he made. This machine shoots out a random wool block and conveniently has 9 slots just as much as the hotkey bar. I can also change the machine's pace if I'm comfortable enough to go faster. Thanks to this, I was able to train myself with hotkeys and able to be more precise with selecting the right item. Moving back to the frustrating part of this whole training session, parkour. I've had many, many, many frustrating moments on this subcategory. So parkour, a word derived from the French language, is a training practice where the aim is to get from one point to another in a complex environment without assisting equipment and in the fastest and most efficient way possible. Now this very same meaning applies to Minecraft as well, but in blocks. The distance a player will jump from one block to another is between 1 to 2 blocks without sprinting and 3 to 4 blocks while sprinting. As the Minecraft's fandom wiki states, jumping can be combined with sprinting to increase the player's movement speed. Now there is a whole video made by Dream explaining how it's possible to do a 5 block jump or even go further. In a nutshell, mastering this skill would drastically help me to maneuver faster on all types of terrain, especially in hardcore mode while trying to outrun enemies. At first, I was learning how to perform this technique just like a baby learning how to walk. I've fallen many times. After a couple days, I've drastically improved but not as much as I thought since I tried parkouring just like a baby who tries to run before they master walking. But nearing the end of the first week, I've managed to complete a few obstacle courses on various lobbies in Hypixel. On the second week, 
I found out about the housing lobby and conveniently it has parkour courses. Most of them change every once in a while or every week, but I'm not really sure. I'm nowhere near being the best at this, but one piece of advice I can give here is to never use a skip for a particular level because that can slow your progress down. I was stuck on one level for about an hour and that happened to me a few times. Eventually, I managed to pass those levels, making me feel really good about myself. Woo! Yeah, baby! That's what I've been waiting for! A fight between two or more people, creatures, or things. Here, I can tackle the last two things that can help me improve and survive in hardcore Minecraft. A critical hit is an attack that deals extra damage. Anything used to attack can do a critical hit and will cause small star particles to fly out of the target when succeeded. The attack deals 150% of the attack's base damage after strength is applied and for the Java edition before enchantments or armor are applied. The criteria for this method to occur is to attack a mob while falling. This includes while I come down from a jump and not while jumping up. What? I can't be on the ground, climb a ladder or a type of vine, or even swim. I can't be affected by blindness or slow falling. I can't perform this while riding an entity, for example a horse, pig, strider, etc. I can't be faster than walking, which includes flying or sprinting. Oh, and also my base attack cooldown must not be reduced to 84.8% damage or lower. So just to be safe, the cooldown of my weapon can't be below 85%. This is the bar right below the crosshair on your screen. It sounds like a lot, but in reality, it's very simple. Just jump, wait for a character to fall, and then deliver a blow before landing. Archery is the art, sport, practice, or skill of using a type of bow to shoot arrows. In this training session, I'll be trying to hit targets from different ranges. This, combined with Aim Beast, has helped me improve with the use of a bow. And finally, I'll try to combine everything that I've trained for with a battle against a lot of different mobs while I'm equipped with full iron armor, water bucket, a diamond sword, a shield, and a bow. So here's a little montage of the combat training. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next video. <laughs> wow.